Hey, good morning from the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. Hope you're doing well today. It is 3R Thursday where we talk about requirements. Um, it's not working too well, is it? <laughs> I blew my mind with the, the feed, the picture in the beginning there for a second. Requirements, reviews, and retros. Today I want to talk about the requirements, a little bit of planning and operating during the sprint. How do you handle requirements during the sprint? And I was inspired by my son this morning and people I've worked with in the past where scrum masters and managers think their job is to hand out every little task or every little story for the team to do when they, when the team, when the team member's done, they should be asking the product owner um, what to do next. And that's not what they're supposed to be doing. That is a very slow process in your system. And I'm saying, stop it fix it, find a way to do it. I'm not talk about today today. And I want to sh share where my son this morning went to this little Betty Crocker list of, oh, there's the cinnamon bun. He wanted to make some cinnamon rolls um, for looking for recipes and made French toast this morning. So I'm going to compare that with what his thought was. So this is a 10-year-old picking from a giant backlog. And I took a picture on the intro of our cookbook, um, list so you can say that's a huge backlog of things they can try, right? And uh, this 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I am Greg Master, Scrum Master and Agile Coach. And here we talk about Scrum and Agile in a very practical and tactical way. So you can bring more value to your customer, not work so hard to bring that value to your customer and have a little fun along the way. And the fun this morning was while I was out walking, getting up early and walking the dog, I come back to, uh, hey, dad, do you want French toast? I'm like, sure, why not? So I thought about that as where he could have asked me, Dad, what's the recipe for the French toast? Dad, how do I make French toast? How do I set all this up? What should be the next thing I should make for breakfast? And ask me those questions. Rather, I was doing something else, you know, multitasking maybe. I was doing something else, walking a dog, taking Jerry for his morning walk. I come back and he's already got the French toast done. He's already flipping on the pan and everything's good to go. And this is a 10 year old, right? So he looks at this giant backlog and, and this is basically a backlog. This is like, you know, um, breakfast, maybe that's a feature, uh, you know, meat, poultry, whatever, cookies, power his backlog is. And he's looking through his backlog. And in fact, he started picking, uh, apparently, apparently we're going to have French dip for dinner tonight. Um, he's got his pancake recipe so he can make his pancakes. And then uh, he's looking that he wants to make cinnamon rolls. So he's actually planning a sprint. <laughs> I guess he's planning to cook all weekend, you know, what he's going to do all weekend. And he's going to pick it out. But the, the similarity for a scrum team with product owners who and teams that think they have to wait, and the words wait, that it's a bad word, wait, for the product owner to tell them what to do next is a sign of a system and a handoff system that it's not working. That's too damn slow, right? And what we really need to do is find ways to make it faster. And that's what sprint planning is about. It's about laying out what work the team can do, and what priority order. And when they're done, they just go pick the next one up or the one they really want to do on a list and go do it, right? And there's some option. They feel like, I want to do this one because I feel like it's fun and I'm going to get it done. And there's a little motivation to that versus, oh, I have to pick something I don't want to do which lowers the motivation. But if you have your backlog set up right and have a good agreement, a good working agreement, good team agreement on how to handle the backlog with your team, they shouldn't have to ask you anything after sprint planning. I mean, seriously, they should not unless something hot comes up, but then you guys as a product owner can announce it during daily scrum. Oh, by the way, this hot thing came from the CEO, need to get done or this production bug or whatever. And they need someone who, whenever you get free and finish what you're doing, the next one, if someone could take up this hot item, that would be great, right? Um, and that you do all your planning and refinement and make sure there's enough information. Hopefully, the product owner at this point in time knows the kind of information the team needs, has it pretty much at 80% good or better for the team. And the team's just going to look at it. Yeah, I got everything I need. Uh, yeah, I just need this one thing. Because if it is a hot item, 
uh, hope the product owner darn well goes and gets all the information the team needs so they can deliver it in a timely manner, right? Makes sense. So what was nice about, like I said, I did not, he wasn't waiting for me. He just went and cause I saw him I'm like, what are you doing? He had the card deck open, you know, he's in there, he's sitting in his chair. He's like, Ooh, what do we got in here? What can I make? And he's like looking at it and everything like that. And that's just, it is exactly like how a team should be operating with their sprint backlog. Now I always trained my teams and I always trained my product owners that let's say you have a good backlog in your, for your sprint. There should be in your next sprint bucket. I like to call, I call everything a bucket. And my kids are going, yeah, bucket, dad's bucket. Like a glass of water is a bucket. <laughs> anyway, I go in the next sprint bucket should be the next couple items prioritized that you want to get worked on as a product owner. Um, even if they don't fit in the sprint, because maybe they didn't fit on the front sprint, but we really don't know how long or how fast it's going to take for the team to to get the work done. So they may get done really quick. So they might need something to burn through. They shouldn't be waiting for you as a product owner to give them work. Anytime I hear that, I'm like, we're doing things wrong and I need to have a conversation um, with my team, my leaders who are, who are setting up these lists and how we operate this stuff. And, and, and it should just be flow, right? You set up like, hey, here's a couple of priorities and maybe I'll do a session. How do you prioritize your backlog so that you can go to the next thing? Here's some tips that I use with teams I've coached in the past and things they have come up with and what we have agreed to as a group. So with that, I want to say, I hope maybe you're encouraging your kid. Dude, I get free breakfast. <laughs> I don't have to do nothing. Teaching them to be independent, how to do stuff on their own. I don't have to do much at all. He knows how to beat an egg and 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 shift the flour and do that. Sometimes I just have to reach up high to get the flour and stuff for him because he can't reach it. Now that's a job of a scrum master. Something's blocking you, you know, get rid of the blockers. Okay, I'll put all the stuff. I mean, I've already done it where we have a jar full of pan, you know, spatulas and spoons and stuff like that. And it wasn't a point where he could get to it. So I moved it down to a level that he could get to it because he's only 10. Um, so that he didn't have to ask me for the spatula. Smart, huh? So he's not waiting for me for the spatula, the spoon, or whatever. I already taught him safety stuff. He knows how to do it, so it's good to go. So I want to encourage you to get your team. They should never, ever, ever have to ask you what to do next, right? If they have to, and they're waiting. Then it's waiting, waiting for you. Because let's say you got your own stuff you got to do. You got to take care of all those stakeholders that want to disturb the team. You got to do that stuff. You don't have time to do a lot of that. What work should I do next? That's such, that's such a minor thing. And this will help free your time up so you're not worrying about what do they do next? What should they do next? You're planning sprint, 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 buckles, buckets of work, not just individual work for an individual person. That should be automatic. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you to do today. It was interesting. And it was since it is requirements and kind of review, you know, planning sessions, requirements, kind of the same thing. I wanted to share that with you as a thing I see a lot of teams do. And I'm like, oh man, you shouldn't be doing that. You don't need to do that. They're smart people. If I can get a 10 year old to pick stuff up and make breakfast, then I can get a developer to pick something off the backlog and do it. Don't need me. Anyway. Have a great day. Happy scrumming. See you tomorrow on Fun Friday. And I wish you all the best. Bye. See ya.